This WSMV article outlines that Hogan's departure was in part due to a federal lawsuit filed by another employee regarding her termination from Ramsey Solutions for violating their company policy against... Uh, so I just heard the news this morning that Dave Ramsey personality Chris Hogan is no longer with the Ramsey Solutions organization. And so that obviously prompted me to kind of delve into some of the information, the research, some of the articles that I've seen. But I wanted to make this video particularly for those of you guys that are, you know, big Chris fans have made, you know, lots of progress by using his material as just a means to kind of help you frame this, think about it, metabolize it, and ultimately stay on track with whatever progress that you've made. So let's jump into it. When I woke up to that news this morning, my jaw really hit the floor. And if you stick around to the latter part of the video, I want to unpack my direct personal experience with the Ramsey organization and with Chris Hogan as part of the Dave Ramsey Preferred Coaching Program. So in this video, what I really aim to do is uncover what we know now, outline why this is sad and a wake-up call, talk a little bit about my personal experience with the Dave Ramsey organization, and then four, kind of outline a way forward for those of us that have maybe followed Chris and followed Dave and really just plant some seeds of hope for how to move forward uh, knowing what we know now. But first I wanted to jump into some primary resources that I've been sort of consuming this morning to try to help me understand kind of the background of what's going on. And hopefully that will be helpful to you as you form your opinion, as you form your thought process around this and figure out a way to move forward with it. Okay. So jumping into it, there's a super vague sort of legally correct 50 second video that's uh, directly from Chris uh, there on YouTube. So I'll leave a link in the description below for that, just announcing his departure. And I, like I said, it's it's really, you know, kind of vague. And it, it seems like, you know, maybe the Ramsey lawyers sort of wrote this. This story is still very new. So if you're seeing this in the future, uh, just keep that in mind. And also in this era of much fake news, I always recommend that you dig deeper and, and vet out your own resources. This WSMV article outlines that Hogan's departure was in part due to a federal lawsuit filed by another employee regarding her termination from Ramsey Solutions for violating their company policy against uh, premarital. And I quote, Hogan's announcement comes two days after attorneys for Caitlin O'Connor, a former Ramsey employee, filed requests for Hogan's personnel file as part of an ongoing federal lawsuit. O'Connor is suing Ramsey, saying after four years of employment, she was unfairly terminated after becoming pregnant out of wedlock. As part of Connor's filing, attorneys claim that eight Ramsey employees were disciplined for having premarital in a motion last month to try and dismiss part of O'Connor's lawsuit, attorneys for Dave Ramsey responded by writing, he is a purveyor of biblically based educational resources, prohibits employees from engaging in plaintiff's employment was terminated for violating this rule. So it looks like as a lot of this evidence sort of emerges and there are a couple of other articles that I'm going to show you guys as well that part of what is happening here is this former employee that's bringing a lawsuit against the Ramsey organization is sort of calling foul or sort of whistleblowing in a sense that a certain standard was held to her behavior but wasn't held to Chris Hogan's behavior and so it gives the appearance and again this is all alleged at this point it gives the appearance that the Dave Ramsey organization is sort of parting ways with Chris Hogan as a reaction to this law lawsuit. From the research I've done, it appears that it was likely infidelity was the major contributing factor to Chris's divorce back in 2019. And I'll leave a link to his ex-wife's blog post article in the description, which I think she does a really good job uh, in her opening statement. It has recently come to my attention through a video posted on YouTube that my ex-husband Chris Hogan is no longer a team member at Ramsey Solutions. I note that while his statement generically expresses being sorry for harm, he does not take responsibility for the impact of his actions on his family, people who trusted him, 
or people whose jobs depended on his role and integrity. He does not acknowledge that his actions profoundly hurt people, including me, our children, my family, and other women he manipulated. He also does not acknowledge the role that Ramsey Solutions and Dave Ramsey himself played in harming and manipulating me as well as covering up his actions. So some pretty strong assertions coming from Chris Hogan's uh, ex-wife about Dave Ramsey's organization knowing uh, that this was an issue and not dealing with it until now. So there's a lot to unpack in this, and I'm sure the legal proceedings will likely unearth a lot of potentially very unsavory facts for us to all have to metabolize. Another complicated and disappointing assertion by Chris's ex-wife here is this problem was known for some time and Ramsey's alleged handling of the situation doesn't look good according to her. And she says that in this next paragraph, as I noted in my initial statement of January 15, 2021, Ramsey Solutions was well aware of my ex-husband's misconduct as far back as December, 2018, or perhaps earlier. To the extent they claim that new information has compelled their decision to terminate my ex-husband, it is clear that they had sufficient information over two years ago that his conduct was inconsistent with Ramsey's core values and chose to do nothing until now. Instead, they chose to manipulate, cover up, and intimidate. So again, really, really strong statements and, and it doesn't look good for uh, the Ramsey organization. And it looks like as I kind of dig a little bit deeper into this, Chris Chris's ex-wife is not alone. There are some additional resources that outline some of the alleged internal workings of the overall corporate culture at Ramsey Solutions. Uh, and this one in particular, I, I thought was a, a story worth worth sharing. In November 2018, as the company was gearing up for a multi-million dollar book launch for Ramsey radio host Chris Hogan's Everyday Millionaires, Hogan's wife Melissa came to Ramsey leadership with allegations that Chris had been unfaithful to her. The husband of a woman Chris had an affair with had begun to com comment on Chris's Twitter feed responding to his tweets with Bible verses about adultery. Melissa Hogan believed that the allegation against her, hub, her husband would become public. Melissa told RNS in an email that she went to see Ramsey to discuss what to do. The company said she had been supportive of her husband after their youngest son was diagnosed with a rare disease. She also knew, given Ramsey's outspoken stand against adultery, that coming forward would cost Chris his job It was concerned about the couple's future. If their spouse can't trust them, neither can I, Ramsey wrote in Entree Leadership, and the company has been willing to defend its code of conduct in court. So this article is, you know, it's it's pretty scathing. I mean, if you if you read through it, there's a lot of very detailed information in here, including accounts of details from the divorce filing and admissions on the part of Chris Hogan. I also thought it was really interesting, too, if you go down to the comments section of this uh, particular post, you'll see uh, a good number of former Ramsey employees like this one. I spent some years working for Dave. I left on good terms and didn't have to sign any sort of NDA, non-disclosure agreement. This article does a good job of rooting out some of the issues the organization has and snarky Dave's response is typical and expected. If you work there now, please consider how you are being brainwashed. Best place to work, rare air. We are not like those other companies. I can assure you that when you leave, you will understand what we're all talking about. If you have never worked there, I can assure you, you have no idea what you're talking about. The place has so much in common with every other, every other cult that it pretty much is one. There are well-meaning people there who are just trying to make a living and there are gung-ho, hardcore Dave acolytes. And Dave continually risks their well-being through his actions and his attitude. He cares only about himself and his actions have consistently shown that despite his words. And this is something that I've begun to cover a lot on my channel um, as I, part of what we do on our platform is help five and six figure corporate employees and entrepreneurs organize and op optimize their finances, obliterate their debt, and accelerate toward financial independence by starting online businesses. And one of the reasons that we do that, one of the reasons I do that is that I escaped what I would consider a corporate cult myself. So when I read these stories, I have a connection uh, with them. So all of that to say that I think that there are a few very distinctive takeaways and thoughts that I want to share, and we'll go into that next. Hey friend, I'm Brad with Zero Debt Coach, where we help five and six figure corporate employees and entrepreneurs organize and optimize their finances, obliterate their debt, 
and catapult themselves toward financial independence through starting and growing online businesses. So this is both sad and a wake-up call. Um, there is a reality of sin in our lives, and I know a lot of people don't like to use that word, but it is a reality that there is a destructive force in our lives that if we make wrong decisions are going to catch up with us and not only cause destructive consequences for us personally, but for those in our lives, our families, our coworkers. And really, no matter what the outcome of this whole situation is, there are no winners. You know, there are no winners apart from potentially justice for the alleged victims. So for us to avoid these types of pitfalls, there are basically three sort of sub points that I wanted to make here. Number one, make sure you have guardrails in your life. Sin, and particularly sexual sin, is one of those things that doesn't take much to completely derail your life, to derail your relationships, to derail your career. And so you want to make sure that you have guardrails in your life that are going to keep you far away from that. No matter what the consequences of this, no matter what the outcome of this situation is, it appears as though sexual sin was at the root of it. Number two, and I'm actually going to read this one. So if you're a leader, you must have integrity in the way you enforce your company policies. There can be no partiality, favoritism, special treatment, or protected classes. You must be even-handed in your dealings in all things. And this holds true most especially if you hold yourself up as a Christian leader. Now, admittedly, all this remains to be seen as part of the legal proceedings, but the anecdotal evidence potentially points to some preferential treatment being meted out uh, here to benefit Chris Hogan. And again, you know, do your own research here, but that's overwhelmingly what it looks like. And number three, I'm going to read this one too. Do not trust men or women for that matter. Humans are fallible and will always disappoint you if you hold them in too high a regard. Take the solid principles that they're teaching, if they're applicable, if they're sound, and apply them to your life, but don't get caught up in the all too common cult of personality that is so pervasive in our culture where we hold these leaders, we hold these celebrities up as icons of morality, and guess what? They are just human like the rest of us, and they have sin in their lives no matter how uh, righteous they try to live or how much they try to serve the Lord, we are all constantly trying to crucify that sin in our lives. So the third big point that I wanted to sort of cover, and this is just going to be sort of off the cuff, is my experience with the Dave Ramsey organization, you know, as a whole. Now, in full disclosure, I went through Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University starting back in 2004. Uh, I had basically become financially destitute. Uh, there's a, a longer story, and I'll leave a link to the in the description below to what that story is. But I'm so incredibly grateful to him and to that organization for giving me a framework to work my way out of debt, to develop a certain mindset that has gotten me to the place in life and my wife and to the place in life where we have not only eliminated all debt, but we're on our way to building, you know, a solid foundation for, you know, wealth, for, uh, for living and giving for all the things that Dave talks about in, in baby step seven, we are able to live and to give like no one else. And the, one of the great things too, that we're super duper grateful to that organization for is the fact that we're able to share what we've learned obviously with our own spin on it, uh, with a lot of people. And so we're kneecap to kneecap, video screen to video screen with people every week, teaching them these principles, encouraging through this stuff. And that is a huge blessing. In 2017, I decided to get really serious about financial coaching. And I went through Dave Ramsey's Master Certified Financial Coaching Program, which at that time was still uh, being held live uh, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee in their corporate offices. And so I had gotten to a place where I had been coaching for almost a decade at that point, just sort of off the cuff, teaching friends and family how to do a budget and, and some things like that. And I decided that I really wanted to develop that as a solid side hustle to help me escape uh, the corporate cult <laughs> that I like to say that I was in. And so I went through that training and uh, it was great. It was basically a 90 day program with about three and a half days worth of live training. Uh, Chris Hogan was one of the instructors. Uh, Dave made a few appearances as well as Rachel Cruz. And I felt like overall, 
it was a really good investment for me in terms of developing confidence in my own ability to coach, to give me some sort of framework to lead people through and really just buttress a lot of the things that I learned going through that process myself and kind of how to externalize and teach those things to other people. I then very soon afterwards enrolled in what's called their preferred coaching program. And this is basically, uh, I think, a well-intentioned uh, subscription program where you as a coach are listed on their website for uh, a certain range of zip codes that reach out to them for some sort of financial coaching or financial help. And so I was a part of that program for I think about two and a half years. And it was largely a good experience um, through no fault of theirs, just to be fair. I think a lot of the leads that came through were people that were not really super serious. And so I was I found myself paying for a subscription um, that I I wasn't really sure how valuable it was. Uh, the other the other piece of that is that as I was sort of coming to the conclusion that you know I don't just don't think the value is in in this they all of a sudden called a a Zoom a sudden Zoom conference call and basically raised the price of the subscription that I was paying a hundred and fifty percent of what it was that I had been paying up to that point. And I remember um, voicing some dissent in the chat in the Zoom call. And um, it was really interesting because I intended to stay in the program throughout the rest of that month, but they immediately terminated my subscription. And when I reached out to them about it and, and asked them about it, uh, they referred to my comment. I was definitely pushing back on you know what they were telling us and really just asking the question like, wow, 150% increase, That is this really justified? So my overarching experience with them as a financial coach was that I appreciated the training and I have always tried to be really careful about how I've talked about them because like I, like I said, I've always respected Dave. I've always respected uh, what he teaches. But increasingly that coupled with, I think a lot of the, the things that I've seen, uh, I, I feel like Dave has really become a lot more, a lot grumpier and he's gotten a lot more disrespectful and kind of condescending to people. And as I was, as I've been researching these stories, and particularly reading some of the comments of from former employees or you know apparent former employees in these comment sections, it became very apparent to me that uh, my underlying feelings of why I left the Dave Ramsey organization were very very much well founded, and I've actually done much better. Uh, going out on my own as a financial coach, and I've been able to have much, much more influence, sort of jettisoning and departing from, you know, just the rigidity of the way that he teaches, and really just kind of making sure that I'm meeting people where they are, uh, and helping them develop their own personal finance vocabulary, and not being, you know, s stuck to these super duper rigid uh, principles that they teach necessarily. We usually get there, um, but there's a, there's a way that you can do that, I think, without you know punching people in the face. So that's number three. That's kind of my overarching experience with the Dave Ramsey organization. I wanted to talk about number four is, you know, where do we go from here? You know, if you've been following Chris Hogan, if you've been following Dave Ramsey, I think that that's great. I think that you should continue to do that. Those principles are sound. They're timeless. I would also encourage you to look at other coaches, to look at other personal finance gurus, ones that are sound. Uh, and, and follow them and start looking, particularly if you're in the situation where you've eliminated your debt and you've got your fully funded emergency fund. I'm of the strong opinion that Dave Ramsey's investment advice, advice is very, very um, kind of outdated in a lot of ways. One particular issue, which I'm not going to go into a, a ton in this video, but I have upcoming content about his stance on Bitcoin. Having personally been in that space since 2014, I can tell you that he really doesn't know what he's talking about in that. So I use that, um, I use all of these to buttress the point that I made earlier that don't follow a man, don't follow a woman, don't buy hook, line, and sinker what it is that they're telling you. You have to do your own due diligence. You have to delve into a lot of people's material. It's great to start somewhere, to have a framework and a foundation to do that. But I think that this situation, Chris Hogan's situation, is really just a, a great example of how 
uh, men are fallible and that we have to be very, very careful that we don't fall into the pitfalls of the cult of personality. So a free way you can help us out is by giving this video a thumbs up or if you hate the content by double smashing the thumbs down, leaving a comment, let me know what you had for breakfast, and then hit the subscribe button if you're liking what you see. So four ways Zero Debt Coach can help you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell icon and you'll be notified of our new content that we drop every week. Number two, download one of our free guides. You'll learn some of the exact strategies that we teach our students to help them organize and optimize their finances, crush their debt, and move on to financial independence by starting and growing an online business. If you're looking for a group of motivated and like-minded people, go ahead and get on the wait list for our Zero Debt Plus private coaching community. We only open it a couple of times a year, so make sure you get on the waiting list for that. And number four, if you need some help right now, reach out to me in the comment section below or shoot me an email at brad at zerodebtcoach.com. And finally, check out one of these other videos. I'm sure you'll find them helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.